We're now joined by Professor Syed Marandi, who's an Iranian academic and chair of North American Studies. Uh, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, always good to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. So, Thank you for having me. Tell us about this. Is this a concession that uh, Iran has made to allow these cameras to be replaced? No, not really. The Iranians said that they would allow the cameras to be replaced after their investigation is over. Because, as you pointed out, the Americans and the Israelis carried out an operation uh, uh, sabotaging parts of the uh, installation, the building, and one of the cameras was destroyed. And the Iranians said that they will have to carry out an investigation first before they can allow the cameras to be reinstalled. But there was never any debate over whether the cameras would be returned or not. The head of the IAEA is obviously close to the Americans. We know from WikiLeaks that um, all of the uh, those who are in charge of the IAEA have to get uh, a green light from Washington, as we saw with the WikiLeaks documents regarding his, the, the predecessor of the current head. And so when the Americans and the Iranians are at loggerheads, the IAEA puts, uh, tries to put more pressure on Iran, but uh, the Iranians basically told them uh, a couple of days earlier that the investigation is over and they'll allow the cameras to be uh, installed. However, the Iranians said that they will not allow any of the information, any of the photos taken by the cameras to be used by the IAEA until there's a comprehensive agreement because Iran has shut, um, has halted access to the cameras by the IAEA throughout the country. I think there are 22 cameras in all in different installations, but the Iranians will not allow the IAEA to access the information in the cameras until there's an agreement because all of these cameras were a part of the JCPOA, the nuclear deal. And since the other side is no longer abiding by its commitments, the Iranians are no longer abiding by their commitments. But in order to allow the JCPOA to be revived, the Iranians are allowing the cameras to stay in place and to continue fo taking photos, but they won't give those photos to the IAEA until the issue is comprehensively resolved. Why would they black out the camera's uh, information? If there's nothing to hide, all it does is that it just tells the story that Iran has been complying with uh, its commitments and uh, there's nothing untoward going on. Well, there are a couple of issues here. One is that uh, in Iran there was the belief that the information provided by the cameras helped with the attack, with the sabotage. The IAEA denies it, but that is not something that everyone believes. And we have a history with the IAEA. Uh, our scientists that were assassinated by the Americans and the Israelis, they were assassinated due to intelligence provided by the IAEA to Western intelligence agencies who then passed it on to the Israelis. So we have a we have a history. Second of all, there's there's the issue of negotiations. There's leverage when you uh, want the other side to remove sanctions, then you have to have leverage to force them to do so. The Europeans and the Americans are not going to take their hands off the throats of the Iranian people if they can keep their hand their arm their hands on our throats they would do so so the iranians are using different means gaining different types of leverage to force the europeans to behave in a more reasonable fashion we we, we see right now in in yemen the americans the europeans the canadians they're all helping the saudis to commit genocide it's unprecedented in, in contemporary human history what's happening in yemen uh, a starvation siege uh, Western countries collectively helping the Saudis and the Emirates to, to, to carry out genocide. 
We see right now in Afghanistan, the Americans have frozen the assets of the country and the country is moving towards starvation. So the Americans and the Europeans are quite ruthless. And the Iranians, therefore, they will use whatever leverage they have to force the other side to, to uh, back off. So at the negotiating table, this is the, the, these sort of things are uh, useful, let's say. It. Let me put it that way. Have the results of the um, Iranian investigation into how the camera uh, got destroyed or got damaged, uh, have those been released? And what, what were the findings? I don't think intelligence agencies will release information that easily. But what I can say is that um, the Iranians will, they checked the new cameras that are being installed. And I, my understanding is that made the IAA unhappy, but they may, they did carry out, uh, they are, um, they, ha they have been checked by the Iranians. What is most important, I think, at this stage, and what may be of interest to your viewers, is that it, uh, until June the 20th, there were a, a series of um, texts that the Iranians and the P5, P4 plus one were discussing to uh, restart the JCPOA. But there were many disagreements in these draft texts, many disagreements. When the new team came in, the new Iranian administration, they checked these drafts, which already had many differences, uh, problems and many differences existed between Iran and the Western countries. The Russians and the Chinese are on board. They're on Iran's side. But the Iranians saw that in these drafts, some of the, some parts of them were actually inconsistent with the JCPOA itself. In other words, the nuclear deal itself was the, these drafts were not, some areas were not consistent with the JCPOA. So the Iranians brought in two new texts to correct those elements. Initially, the Europeans resisted. But now, uh, the last couple of days, uh, in general, the, the mood has become more favorable. The Europeans are, of course, uh, still resisting, but uh, there has been some move forward. The Europeans are not taking those texts and seriously, something which the, initially they were trying not to do. And therefore, I can say that at least at this stage, there is positive movement. There's a narrative that's suggesting that this agreement um, averts a near-term diplomatic crisis that perhaps threatened the wider talks in terms of trying to revive the 2015 uh, nuclear deal. Is that an overstatement? Because at the beginning you did suggest that um, replacing these cameras was never in doubt. Yes, I don't think it is that important, and I don't think that it would have led to a crisis. The, the negotiations over the last two, three days have taken a somewhat positive turn. The Europeans are behaving somewhat more reasonably in the eyes of the Iranians. And uh, as the Iranians have pointed out many times, that the only way that Iran is going to go back to the nuclear deal and implement it is if the Europeans and the Americans go back and implement it in full as well. What the Europeans and the Americans are trying to do is they're trying to keep some many of the sanctions. And that is a violation of the deal. So the Iranians are saying either you come back with us to 2015 or we don't go back to 2015. This is the this is the central issue. Trump, when he became, when he was president, he imposed many different sanctions, and he used, and they were all a part of his maximum pressure campaign. So it was, a, it was a project. Some of the sanctions were in the name of human rights. Some of them were terrorism. Some of them were Iran's military defense capabilities. Some of them the nuclear program. But all of them were a part of the same package. And the Iranians were saying you have to remove all of them because the nuclear deal specifically says that the Europeans and the Americans have to help. They have to normalize Iran's trade and business. And if they want to keep many of these sanctions, that won't ha that's not possible. 
the normalization will not take, take place. The Americans and the Europeans are saying, no, we want to keep the sanctions that are not linked to the nuclear program, the human rights sanctions, the missile defense sanctions, the uh, terrorism sanctions and all that. The Iranians were saying, saying in response, you know as well as we do, this was all just a facade. Trump, this was a part of Trump's maximum pressure. You have to remove them all. And if you want to talk about human rights, let's talk about Julian Assange. Let's talk about your maximum pressure sanctions that kill women and children, what you're doing across the region, terrorism, you know, assassinating Iranian military commanders in, uh, in Iraq, and, and, and the list goes on. So, uh, the, but the Iranians are saying that all this, you, you, if you want us to go to 2015, you have to go to 2015. But don't expect us to go back and implement the deal if you're not going to implement the deal in full. That's the the main issue. So the the European resistance is linked to this part of the whole equation. The Iranians have said that if the Europeans abide by the deal in full, we'll implement everything very quickly. And the Iran's have a, the Iranians have a history of that. When they signed on to the deal, they implemented the deal immediately, and they'll do it again. So quite clearly, a lot of talking still needs to happen uh, in, in this journey. Uh, Professor Mirandi, always Absolutely. good talking to you. Thank you so, so much indeed for joining us. Thank you for having me.